hi everyone. Happy Memorial Day. Um, before we begin, I want to say thank you to all that serve, that have served. Um, thanks to those who have given the ultimate sacrifice to allow me to be able to do exactly the things that um, I'm doing right now. You know, and it isn't, it's because of the men and women that serve and fight for our freedoms that allow me to have the freedom to be able to do the things that I get to do on a daily basis. So just thank you all to those who have served, to those who have given the ultimate sacrifice of, and that's what Memorial Day is for, but also thanks to those that currently serve. Um, we very much appreciate all that you do for us. Okay, with that being said, I'm very, very excited about today's painting. So the idea is I'm going to be using this stencil. Um, it is a fun stencil with the flamingo. Today is a good day, um, which I agree. Today is a great day. You know, um, so many things to be thankful for. So I thought this was a great way to start off the new beach summer series that I'm doing. Um, I love these little sunglasses and I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a lemon or an orange, but we're going to probably make it an orange. Um, so the idea is we're going to have the stencil pretty much like down in this corner. I want to try and paint a palm frond coming down here. I think I'm going to do maybe some seagrass coming up through here. I'm going to probably do some seagulls. I think I might actually use a previous stencil that I have that have some birds because it'll probably look cooler than if I do it myself. Um, but those I'm gonna try and actually paint. I'm actually gonna do a background of like a light blue sky, a little bit of ocean, and then a little bit of like tan color for sand. Um, and then we're just gonna do the stencil on top um, and see what we can do. But it's gonna be bright colors, fun, and summer. So I'm really excited about today. Now, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. The palm frond, I've been practicing. I have not done that a lot. This is newer stuff for me, but um, the practice one I did came out decent. Um, but you know what, this isn't about being perfect. This is about having fun and painting and expressing ourselves. And I think that's what matters more than anything else, you know? So. With that all said, let's get started on this fun, fun piece. Okay, so I'm gonna start down here. So I'm basically going to take about here and here to make this kind of like my sandy area. About here to here, I wanna make my kind of my water area. So technically my horizon line will be pretty high, but it, it's not meant to be, you know, <laughs> perfect to, you know, and then from here to here, I'm gonna try and make my sky, more or less. So to do the bottom layer, I'm gonna do um, some vanilla and some white to kind of give it that. And if, it, if I feel like it's still too light, um, I may end up adding just a little bit of maybe a tan to it, but we'll see. Like I said, this is all new. This is experimental stuff for me. Normally I'm doing abstract kind of stuff. So I wanted to try some new stuff, you know? So, so I'm gonna put some of this vanilla on real quick. Probably gonna need a little bit more than that. Actually a lot more. So I'm just gonna, that would probably be easier at this rate because it'll be too long otherwise. So, there we go. And then I'm going to add my white as well. So how is everybody's Saturday? I mean, by the time you see this, um, it'll probably be past that, but I'm hoping it'll still be Memorial Day weekend. Um, things here in Florida are warm. It's been raining, but beautiful. I. I love it when it rains only because um, when it rains, it cools everything down. We're starting to get into the summer months now and it is going to get hot very, very soon. 
So yeah. So I'm just using, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my summers too. I love living in Florida. I've been here since 91. I'm originally from Massachusetts and this time of year, um, you know, they don't really have a spring necessarily. So, okay. So yeah, so I don't mind the heat, but you know, like everybody else, I like a little coolness every once in a while too and the, the rain helps to cool that off. Okay, so. That looks good. All right, we're gonna keep it around there. All right, so I'm going to clean off my brush. And try not to get my canvas soaking wet, so let's move this over here. You know, when you only have so much space, <laughs> it's kind of hard sometimes. So trust me, I know if you're limited in where you paint, I completely, totally understand. Just try and get some of this excess off here. You always want to try and do your sides while you're painting because that way it matches with what it is you're doing. Unless you don't want your sides painted. You don't have to. There's no hardened rule that says you have to paint your sides. Um, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I just happen to like my sides to match. Okay, so now we're gonna do, we're gonna take ocean blue and we're gonna put that um, here and then I'm gonna put a streak of blue and blend that in. And then I may take just a tad bit of this lime green kind of down here to kind of give it that tropical because in Florida, believe it or not, if you're on the west coast of Florida, which I never knew about, when we came on vacation, we always used to go to Orlando. So Orlando, Atlantic Ocean, same ocean as it is up north. So I never really thought, I'm like, hmm, okay. You know, it was like, whatever. But when I came to the west side, west coast of Florida, I was like, Gulf? What is that? <laughs> I was like, what in the world is that? That water is very tropical. It's incredibly warm because of the Gulf. And it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, wow, beautiful, beautiful weather, beautiful water. And it is very, now I have been to the Caribbean and it, so it's not as pristine and clear necessarily as Caribbean water. But let me tell you, it can be pretty close depending on like if you go down like into Sarasota area and Venice, those areas, I mean, truly, truly beautiful. All right, so I'm just gonna add that to here like that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna Try and blend that down a little bit. And I may, actually, I think I have a little too much blue, so. I'm gonna take a little bit more of this green. Let me put this off. There we go. Make sure I'm doing my side. So yeah, I was I was always shocked. I remember when I first came down here, I was like, what? I had no idea it was like that. Not at all. It was amazing. Yeah. Really beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna wash that real quick. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of lime green. Just, in fact, I might, I might not even do that much, actually. And uh, remember, I am by far a professional. This is all new for me. I'm experimenting. You know, so. Ooh, I kind of like that, actually. Let's do a little bit more. Yeah, that's nice. That's very tropical. Yes, I like that a lot. 
Yeah, very nice. I like it. And I'm just going to add just a hair of that blue at the top just to get a bit more of a line up here. So don't ever, you know, one of the things I have learned through this experience is don't ever be afraid to experiment and try new things. Because if you don't ever try, you'll never really grow, you'll never really learn, you know? Remember, if it's not, oh, <laughs> if you screw up, <laughs> if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? It's just a painting. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit over here, make that a little bit more blue. There we go. I like that. Okay. So now I'm going to take a little bit this ocean and a little bit of white and make our sky. And I'm still working on talking while I work while I paint, so not quite ready, not completely done with that yet, but we're working on it. And I might take a little bit of that blue, just a, just a, just, actually, you know what, I'm gonna, instead of that, I'm gonna use, I have a sky blue right here. I'm gonna add just a hint of that, just so it's not quite so green but I don't want it as blue as the top of this ocean here. Maybe. <laughs> you can tell I've been using this because it doesn't want to come out. Come out. There we go. So I figured I would do a beach series because, um, you know, first of all, I live in Florida. So that seemed like an obvious thing, right? But then I have really great memories of the beach when I was a kid. You know, I don't know if you have what your memories of your summer was like, were like, but I had great memories. Um, I learned to swim on the beach. My family, we used to go to the beach all the time. You know, it was always so much fun. I remember we would go really, 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 really early. And we'd bring coolers and we'd have our lunch. And then by the time we were getting ready to go, everybody decided to start showing up. And we're like, see ya. <laughs> I missed all the crowds. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, so we have to let this dry before we can do our next step. So I'm going to dry this probably with a little bit of a hair dryer 
And um, actually, before I do that, real quick, I'm going to take some of my white here. I'm going to do just a few little waves, just really, really light through here. Just so it looks like little ocean waves. Okay, now we're gonna let it dry. And then when we come back, we'll start working on our palm frond and seagrass next. So the power of editing. Now I did do a little mess up right here, but guess what? One thing that I've had to learn when it comes to painting is the goal is not to be perfect. The goal is to have fun and to create something. And I'm not trying to be the next Rembrandt. I'm not trying to create a realistic beach scene, right? I'm not looking for something that's going to go into the National Museum. I'm creating a whimsical, fun piece for summer. And that's what you, you gotta keep in mind, especially I'm a beginning painter. I've only been painting for less than a year. It'll be a year in July. Okay, so I'm still learning a lot. So if I make a mistake, if it's my lines not perfect, my gradient isn't perfect, it's okay. So if you're just starting out and you're afraid to do something because you're afraid you're gonna mess it up, you know, don't worry about it. You know what worst case scenario? Get some gesso, if you really hate it, get some gesso gesso the whole thing and start over. That's the wonderful thing about craft paints. And if you use craft paints, or just, I mean acrylic paint, but if you use craft paints, craft paints are, are relatively inexpensive. So, I mean, you're talking, depending on the paint, anywhere from a dollar and a quarter to maybe a dollar fifty, maybe two dollars if you get more, go into like the deco art or something. But if you mess up or you waste paint, I'm out a buck and a quarter. It's not the end of the world, okay? So let yourself mess up because you're gonna learn more from what you did wrong than you ever did right, okay? I have learned from my failures so much that I have been starting to expand. I mean, my sunflower, if you haven't seen my sunflower video yet, I suggest you watch that, okay? Because the sunflower was the first time I actually ever attempted to do that. And I was shocked that it came out as well as what it did. So, but that's only through practice, failing, practicing some more, because I know ultimately this is what I love to do, okay? So give yourself a break. All right, getting off my soapbox now. Okay, so now we have, ah. Oh, this is still wet on the sides. I'm obviously gonna have to do some touch-ups because I keep touching it. <laughs> anyway, that's okay. I am going to use, okay, I am going to use a round brush. This one is a number eight round brush, okay? I'm going to use this for the whole um, palm front. I'm going to use this sap green, and the only reason I'm using this particular brand of paint and not craft paint is that I don't have a craft paint this dark of a green. So I want this dark of a green to mix with this apple tart, which is kind of a yellow green, not quite lime, but a little bit, there's a little bit of yellow in it. And um, these two colors together work really well to make the shade that I want. So. I am going to I am going to clean my palette because it's <laughs> it's like completely full and dirty. So hold on. Okay. So I'm going to put down some sap green and tart. 
So what we want to do is we want to start with more of the apple tart color and then we're just going to add a little bit of this sap green. Here, let me move this in so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then just a little bit. So I don't want it completely dark, but I don't want it completely light either. do is I'm going to progressively make this darker and darker until we just use the sap green by itself so okay and I'm cleaning my brush off because I, I probably shouldn't mix with my brush but I do and it gets clumped on there and I want it to be um, a clean line so all right so we're going to just get some paint on our brush here and the guy the idea the goal is going to be trying to make this palm frond that kind of comes down like this okay so here we go we're going to make the kind of the stem first about like that that sounds good that looks good i think that sounds good too right okay so now what i want to do is I'm going to add just a little bit more. So I got my stem. Now I'm going to add the actual fronds. And so to do this, I'm going to start over here. I'm going to work my way up. So I'm going to start with smaller branches. And it's okay that you have spaces because we're going to fill them in. But just realize that this is going to take time, okay? Anything worth doing is worth doing well. And you just, that one thing that's nice about painting is if you can get <laughs> a quiet space, which sometimes is not always easy in my household, but if you can get some quiet space, quiet time, you know, this can be really therapeutic. Okay, and then we're gonna do the other side. So, if you're like me, I can always do one side really well. The other side, not so much. So, just remember, you don't have to be perfect. Okay, so let's see. And then as you're Going up, you're you're making your leaves a little longer each time, a little longer than the previous one. Okay. And the nice thing is. I don't know if you've ever noticed or not, but nature isn't always perfect. So if your palm fronds aren't always perfect, it's okay. The point is to just enjoy the experience, okay? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, oops, I'm gonna try and dry that better. I'm going to take some more of this, right, the lighter green that we got here, and then I'm going to add a bit more of our sap or our dark green because what I want to do now is I want to start progressively making them a little darker each time so that we have a little bit of highlights, we have shadows creates a little bit of depth even though this isn't a you know oil fine oil you know fine art masterpiece we still want to try and make it look pretty 
You know what I mean, Bert? <laughs> okay. So now we're just gonna do the process all over again, kind of filling in our spots, okay? So. So do you have any summer memories that you remember? Summer vacation? Like I said, the beach was probably a big, really big part of my life growing up. I mean, I grew up basically on Cape Cod in Massachusetts and nothing, nothing against Cape Cod, but there's not usually a whole lot to do there. I mean, in the summertime you have beach you have uh restaurants you have the mall hyannis mall um and <laughs> frankly that's probably the extent of it you know i mean maybe i my dad wasn't really a golfer so didn't really get introduced to golf till i moved to florida that and nascar racing that's a big thing down here. Apparently cornhole. <laughs> cornhole is a thing down here. I remember moving when I first moved here and somebody said, hey, we're gonna play cornhole. I'm like, what in the heck is cornhole? I'm like, what is it? I never heard of it. Well, somebody had just said, it's that beanbag game. Oh, but apparently down here, they take that pretty serious. Yeah. They have tournaments. You know how I know? Because I've been in like three of them. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we're just gonna keep kind of filling this in. Like I said, every time. And try to keep contact to that center stem because obviously these are growing out of the stem so we want to keep contact with that right we're just gonna like i said slowly and don't worry if your palm fronds are not perfect like i said it's not the end of the world it's okay it was funny you know how i knew <laughs> i had done my sunflower right to the extent that people could tell it was a sunflower was because my husband, I was doing the painting and my husband came out and he said, oh, look, a sunflower. I'm like, bingo, <laughs> I got it. So you always know when the person that doesn't really know that much about art gets it, then you know you got it right. <laughs> you have one of those at home? <laughs> My husband is a former firefighter out of Boston. So he tells me all these firefighter stories and the firefighter stuff that goes on. And some of his stories are hilarious, don't get me wrong. But there are times when I'm like, he starts getting into technicals like the pick lines and the this lines and the pumpers and the whatevers. And I'm like, okay, what time is it? <laughs> you know, just like he does with my painting, so. All right, so now we're gonna just go directly with the sap green. Just really light though, not too, too heavy. You just kind of want to fill in a little bit. And add a little bit of dark. So we have some different colors, you know, we have, we have some lights, we have some darks. Just realize you don't have to do every single frond dark. You don't have to fill in every spot. Just do what feels good for you, okay? 
you want to go back and do something over this is your painting do it the way you want to do it okay I heard a, a teacher was teaching a class once an art class and she's like you have to promise that you will just have fun you promise not to judge your painting at least until it's finished and then you can judge all you want but I would still say don't judge you know maybe you might not like it but just because you didn't do it right the first time doesn't mean you can't paint okay because for years I thought I couldn't paint and I think a lot of it was just that I never found the right way to learn until a year ago, you know? I found something that resonated with me. I kept trying and I realized that, you know what? You just can't give up because something gets hard. If it's something you really wanna do, then you just gotta practice. And each time you do it, even if you do something poorly, just don't look at it as a failure, okay? What people don't realize is failure is not the end. They think that's the end, and myself included. For years, I thought, well, if I can't do this, then obviously I'm just not meant to do this because I'm not a very good painter because, you know, if I was meant to do this, I would be good at it, or I'd at least be decent. That's not the case. You have to hone your skill and work, and you will learn from your failures of what not to do perfect example is did you know that Thomas Edison when he was trying to invent the light bulb failed 10,000 times he found out 10,000 different ways how to not make a light bulb I mean and if you think about it how honest if you're really honest with yourself how soon do you think you would have given up? I probably would have given up after five. I'm like, well, obviously we're not meant to do anything but other than candlelight, right? So you just, you gotta give yourself a break sometimes. Okay, so is it a perfect palm frond? No, but can you tell that it's a palm frond? Yeah, pretty much. Now, if you want, because I have this, the leaves kind of going over my line, I can kind of, Take some of my stuff here and then take a little bit of this. Try and get back to that original color. You can go over it if you want, just to make it a little bit finer so it's not like um you, know, you can do you can clean it up if you want. You don't have to, but you can if you want. So that it looks more like it's coming out of the branches instead of on top of the stem. Okay. You know what? It's not half bad. If you step back, it looks like a palm frond. You know, it's doing its job. So I'm happy with it. Okay. So the next step that I want to do is I want to do some seagrass kind of down here. So I'm going to start again with my sap green. So I'm gonna take some of this, same brush, all right, just on the tip, and I'm just gonna be kind of really whimsical with it, right? Kind of just do it, and try to do it um, different lengths, and, and you just do it really fast, but really light, and just using that tip. And then just put as many as you want. You can leave it there if you want. You can add more if you want. You can do it as big as you want, as little as you want. Remember, this is your painting. You paint what feels right. Okay, 
I'm gonna stop there. And then I'm gonna take some of my dark green here that I already have made up. So it's a little darker. And I'm gonna add to it. So once again, it's adding layers of color, right? So it's not just one color, it's layers. Because in nature, things aren't just one color, they're gradients of color, right? Okay. And then I think I'll add just a couple of the pure. Up like that. Yeah. Cute, right? coming out so incredibly well. I am beyond pleased right now. I can't even tell you. So our next step is we're going to place our stencil on here. Now, I have a little bit, actually it's not gonna get over, so that's cool. So I'm gonna try and dry this a little bit. It's not gonna interfere with up here, but this might get a little interfered, but I wanna place it just so I have an idea. So the next thing before I actually tape this down and start working on it is deciding on colors. So one thing I was thinking about that I wanna do, so the technique I'm gonna be doing is using my gloss medium. If you haven't seen me do this technique, I promise you, this is the coolest thing I have learned with stenciling. I really don't do stencils the way that stencils were originally created with an actual stencil brush and stenciling it out and everything. This is so much cooler. So we're gonna use the gloss medium on top. And what this does, this dries clear, but gives the paint a gloss finish. But it also raises the paint up slightly so it gives it kind of a 3d effect so we're going to be using that but i gotta think colors right so i want my flamingo to be pink i want this to probably be orange i think i want this to be lime green I'm thinking the leaves that i have here will probably be part of the green that we're using already for our palm frond and our grass just to kind of tie that back in but then it's the text. So I kind of think I want to, because we have white down here, we have teal up here. I kind of like doing opposite sometimes. So what I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do is do a dark blue with some of the ocean breeze that we used in the sky and in the water and maybe maybe add a little lime green maybe since i'm using lime green in the glasses anyway but i was used i used a little bit of that lime green in the water so i'm thinking that that would be good i think i like that idea so what i'm gonna do is just um it's probably it's a little tacky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry this real quick and then we're gonna start working on the stencil. So let's get this placed. Now, the key to doing this particular style of stenciling is this stencil, once it's on the canvas, cannot move. It's got to stay in place the whole time until we're done then we take it off. We're gonna take it off while it's still wet, okay? It's really important that it lay as flat to the canvas as it can. The reason that is, is if this starts to lift at all, the medium, this stuff, and the paint will go under to these parts here. 
and it'll mess up the design, okay? So I'm gonna use painter's tape and I'm gonna start taping down these corners. And this is why the paint needs to be dry because you're obviously putting tape on it. Yeah, that's dry. And you wanna make sure that you're obviously not going on top of your design. And the other thing you wanna do is keep a corner of this up so that you can easily take it off when it comes time. Corner down like that. Make sure that's up. And I just keep checking and making sure there's nothing it's still laying flat. We don't want it bouncing or anything, okay? And then I'm gonna tape this corner down like that. Alright, we're doing good so far. Sometimes when you go and you tape all four corners, it'll start to bunch up so that's why you gotta be really diligent about this as best as you can obviously if you, if you can't you can only do what you can do you know okay so it's not bouncing okay good that looks good so it's nice and flat you will also need a palette knife um, you can use there's all kinds of palette knives you can get this is actually an offset spatula that's used for cake decorating, but when I'm using really big stencils, this is really great because you can cover a lot of ground. But I think I'm going to actually use the, I find actually the plastic ones work a little bit better than the metal ones for this, just because this is so sticky. I'm going to use the little one, potentially, the, the thing you have to be afraid, be careful of, sorry, is as you're getting close to, to your edges, like when you're over here, what's gonna happen is this is gonna start building up with medium, right? And it's gonna start spreading down the spatula. Well, when you're here, if you have medium here, it could potentially get on your canvas. And you don't want it to get on here or underneath the stencil, because when you pull it off, it'll take the paint with it. So when I start getting close to the edges, I'll either, usually I'll either start turning my canvas or I'll start using a smaller one, you know, that doesn't, you know, go over the edge or a combination of all those things. So you'll see how as I um, start working this. Okay, so once again, now remember, this is a gloss medium. There's a lot of brands out there that are gloss mediums. Some of them are white. Some of them are like this, which is kind of an opaque. I like the opaque because when I'm putting it down, I can still see the design. And then, for example, in this case, I know that my flaming, flamingo, blah, 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 say that three times fast, right? My flamingo is gonna be pink. My glasses are gonna be green. This is gonna be orange, which by the way, I need to get an orange <laughs> color, which would be probably nice, right? Uh, orange, that one's not open yet. Let's do something more, no, not dark orange. Tangerine, that sounds good. Okay, anyway. Um, so because I'm gonna be doing different colors in various places, I wanna be able to still see my design. And with this gloss medium, because it's opaque, I mean, it's uh, transparent, I can see through it and still see where I'm going. Whereas there's others that are just pure white, they still dry clear, but because they're white, you can't see your design once you put it on. Okay, so, but it's completely up to you. You get whatever you want, but I'm telling you, this is the stuff I like the most. I get this at Walmart all the time. Okay, it's about, for an entire bottle, it's like eight or nine dollars, I think. Um, but for me, it's so worth it. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna just start now. Less is more. You don't need, you don't want a ton of this because then you have to start taking it off. You don't want it caked on. You want a smooth, flat surface, okay? You don't want peaks and all that stuff unless you're making a specific kind of texture, which we're not doing today. So you wanna try and make it smooth and flat as possible without too much excess, okay? So less is more. So I'll use, what I'll do is I'll start with like a line here and then I'll do a line like here and then maybe a line like right here, okay? And that's probably, and to be honest, that's probably a little too much. 
Worst case scenario, you scrape your scraper off. It's not a big deal. But you just don't want to put a massive, you know, right there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn this a little bit just because I'm right-handed. All right, so I'm going to start down here, I guess. I probably should have done this afterwards. So the key to this is keeping your spatula as flat as you can, doing very slow, smooth strokes, and treating it like butter on bread. You're spreading your butter, you're spreading your peanut butter on your bread, right? You're not doing this, it's not painting. It's, it's, fill, cause you wanna fill in these without that medium going under, okay? So, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. This sometimes, depending on how big your stencil is, can take a lot of time, you know? But I promise you, now, do you have to do it this way? Absolutely not. Can you just do your paint and put the straight to paint? Absolutely. You can do the exact same steps I'm doing right now and skip the gloss medium altogether and go straight to paint. Absolutely. But personally, I don't like the look as much. I think the gloss medium just adds that extra oomph to it that I just love. But it's entirely up to you. You can try this and if you don't like it, skip it. You know, just go straight to the paint if you want. I know artists that do that and that's okay. Remember, you're painting. You don't have to do anything you don't want or don't like. See, now I've already got a medium on my... Ah, I did exactly what I told you not to do. Damn it. <laughs> well, hopefully, that says, if, I, if worse comes to worse, I can always touch it up, I guess, so. That's what I get for talking. <laughs> I'm talking and not paying attention. So just nice and smooth, you know, you don't wanna, the big thing too is you don't want to press hard and lift up because that'll pull the stencil up. You just wanna do nice, smooth strokes. Like I said, the goal is to fill in all the spaces. Just fill it all in. Fill it all in best as you can and as smooth as you can and if you're not perfect it's okay because you as you can see I am not perfect when I do this but it's okay it's not the end of the world like I said worst case scenario if you pull some of the paint up and just touch it up after it's all dry there's always ways to fix things okay and I mean, I know that's been my MO for a long time too, is I'm always afraid I'm gonna screw something up. You know, I'm gonna waste canvas. I'm gonna waste paint. You know, sometimes to learn, you kind of have to. I, I'll be honest, a lot of my practice stuff, I'll either do on paper, like on photo paper, or um, you know, the, the painting paper, the acrylic or water paper they have. I get the canvases at the um, the dollar store. See, I need a little bit more right in that corner. So it's always easier to add, it's harder to take away. So I'm actually gonna just stick it right on here. Um, but yeah, I'll get canvases. I'll get the canvas board a lot of times at the dollar store. So, and I use those a lot of times for trial runs just to see if something I wanna do will work. I mean, that's what I did my sunflower on, was a canvas wrapped board from the dollar store to do a trial run to see if I could even do a sunflower. And now that I know that I can, I'll probably do the, oh, darn it, <laughs> that same painting. I got my finger in the gloss. I'll do that same painting on a bigger canvas. Okay, now that we have everything covered, I know this is harder to see down here because of the white, but just do your best to see. Okay, now you kind of have to be somewhat quick at this because this gel medium will start to dry, okay? 
and we don't want it to fully dry. Okay. All right. So let's start. I'm going to start with the glasses and I want those to be lime green. So I'm going to take my lime green and I'm going to put it right on it like that. Don't need a whole lot. I'm going to take my little one, my little spatula and start spreading. Now, oops, same kind of concept. I'm actually going too fast. You want to spread it easily and gently and then add a little bit at a time. Less is more. Okay. And don't worry if it gets on other elements of the painting or of the stencil, because that's kind of the cool part of the stenciling technique is the multiple colors and how everything can kind of blend. And it's just kind of cool. It's kind of hard to explain. It's easier to show. Okay. So I got my glasses done. All right. I'm going to use um, and that this is the really fun part is I'm going to use, let me think, I think I'm going to add the apple tart here and here, and then I may add a little bit of that sap green on top. Maybe, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it, leave it a little brighter. I kind of like that actually. So I'll leave that like that. Okay, we're just gonna work our way down. So now I'm gonna work on this little orange over here. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna slowly spread that around. You don't have to worry about trying to like stay in the lines or make it perfect, trust me it'll work. It's going to be really cool when we're done. Okay. And then every time you're done with a particular area, just always wipe it off. Wipe your, your, um, your knives off. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start working on, actually, you know what? I'm going to work on this flamingo first. I'm going to do this pink blast. It's kind of like bubblegum pink. So we're going to start with that. All right, so I'm gonna put mostly, let's see, where's the body? Body's right here. And we'll put it up like that. That'll be good for now. So I'm gonna, and some of that green might get on my flamingo. It's okay, it's not the end of the world, okay? And then I'm gonna take it down neck and into the body area probably gonna need a little bit more because there's a lot of body on this flamingo but we'll see and then and the white is a little bit hard to see but like I said worst case scenario if you get it on other elements it's okay this technique it's amazing I know it's hard to understand because yeah if you've never seen it before but it's really cool. So even if there's colors that blend together, it's okay. All right, so we're gonna bring this down to our legs. The biggest thing is you wanna make sure the areas um, are covered. Better too much than too little because if you don't have enough paint, you'll end up having a like basically a blank area that's just medium and you'll have to touch it up manually afterwards so now the fun thing is here's what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna take a darker pink okay slightly darker pink and just do like right here with it maybe a little bit here and just kind of do a little extra right there maybe like right here maybe right here that's it that's all i'm doing okay all right so now i'm going to take my blue and start working on today so we're gonna just start like i said don't less is more it's better to start with a little less 
and have to add to it, okay? And don't worry if any of this green gets mixed in here. It's okay. I'm gonna try to avoid it because I don't necessarily want green in my text, but if it gets in, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. So remember, just try and keep it as flat as you can. And the goal is to cover as much of the text as you can, not leaving any spaces. Okay, nice and flat, just like that, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to see all of this good, this A, good and day, and there's a little spiral right here, um, which I'll probably do something with, but I'm just gonna go ahead and keep doing the, the blue for now. So here, doing good, and I know this is probably hard for you to see right now because of the of being white, but um, just know that's what I'm doing, okay? Is I'm going over all the text. Yeah, there's a G right there, so I gotta do that. Oops, and see how I just scoop that? You wanna try and make sure you cover that. Ugh. This is why it's important to slow down. I have a tendency to get excited, especially when I'm talking. All right, so this is, um, yeah, that's a letter. So let me see here. So get this over here. I might have to add a little more blue. I'm trying not to get these leaves right here because I would rather them be green. So, but we'll see what happens. I do need a little bit more blue. I need some here. And let me see. You know, I just realized I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> it's probably part of the reason I can't see. Perhaps I should put my glasses on. Oh, what do you know? Now I can suddenly see. Hey, if you wear glasses, it's probably a good idea to wear them. I don't, I wear readers. I don't wear actual glasses. Like I do when I'm driving or something, but okay. All right, there we go. All the text is now covered. Now, I don't want it to just be blue, right? I want to have some highlight colors too. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wipe that off. I'm gonna get my sky blue and I'm gonna do little drops in, oops. Not that much. <laughs> okay. Didn't mean to do quite that much, but hey, I guess that's what we're doing. So we're gonna just kind of come around here like so. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do. All right. So now I'm gonna add a little bit more of that apple tart green here and here. And then we are gonna be done with this stencil and then we'll be able to see the results. Cause like I said, we're gonna take it off when it's wet. Okay, so we're gonna cover that, cover that. And hopefully I didn't screw up my canvas, but we'll find out when I take this off. I have a little bit of run over here, so I may take that paint off by accident. I may have to touch that up, but we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, now, this is also a very important step. Once you have all your paint on, you have to anchor your, your um, stencil. Try not to mess up where you have your color and slowly pull your tape off. You do not want to lift your stencil, okay? I'm gonna do it over here. You wanna do it really slow. Do your best to not lift that stencil up because it could accidentally force the 
um, medium and the paint under a stencil where it doesn't belong. Okay, we don't want to mess up our design as best as we can. Okay, and then last but not least. So as you can see, I'm trying to pull literally like straight, not up. Okay, there we go. Now you want to take your edges and you want to slowly pull it off, okay? So if I can get under here, here we go. Slowly, slowly, it's all about being slow, guys. All about being slow. Okay, here we go. Look at that! Isn't that the coolest thing? Look at this, look at all that, right? And don't do that. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, now I don't know if you can see it or not, but see I missed right here, I missed right there. Um, I missed this A over here. This because I didn't get my color fully on it. We'll have a little bit of a mess up right there. But all in all, it's not bad. And once this dries, and see I got a little bit of pink on my green, but that's okay. Once this dries, we can touch it up, okay? And I think I got a little bit of gloss medium on there. And see how, I don't know if you can see it, but right here it did pull up a little bit of the paint. So I may have to touch it up. We'll see how it dries. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the stencil. I'm gonna let this dry. And then we're going to add, now the big thing you wanna do is if you can't clean this right away, you wanna put this on a paper towel spray it down with water, put another paper towel on top. You wanna to keep this as moist as you can because that gloss medium will dry on here and it'll be really hard to wash. So really the first thing you wanna do is try and um, wash it right away. Man, I messed up my today, didn't I? Hmm. I wonder if that was when I picked it up. That's why you gotta do it slow, but I can, I can probably do a fix up on that a little bit too, but it's okay. It's not terrible. So looks so cute. And then what we're gonna do too is once everything is dry, I'm gonna add an eye to our flamingo, maybe add a little bit of black to his beak. I'm gonna maybe paint those tail feathers a little bit more pink. Um, I'm gonna paint in there, paint all the places that I missed with the color. Um, but, oh gosh, that looks so good, doesn't it? I really love it. All right, so I'm gonna go clean this. We're gonna let this dry. We're gonna add some birdies up here. And then once everything is dry, we'll touch everything up and this painting will be done. All right, everything's been dried. I did some touch-ups on the sides. I also did some details, um, which I'll show you in just a second. But first, I wanna finish this painting by adding some birds. I was gonna do the little swoopy doopies and then I realized, ooh, I have a stencil that has birds on it and it's like the perfect amount and distance. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do our gloss medium again. So the big thing I wanna make sure I do is not get it on any of the stuff over here. So actually, you know what I'm gonna do, just to be on the safe side, I am going to cover that up and cover that up. That way, if my gloss medium gets on my spatula or something and goes over, it doesn't accidentally put stuff on there that I don't want. Okay, so all I want is these birds. So I'm really just going to put a blob right there. I'm just gonna use my small one. And we'll do the same thing. Nice and slow and smooth. Remember, you can always add, not take away, so. Well, I need a little bit more. 
just gonna take it right here. nice and clean okay now this is gonna be super easy I'm just using white I'm gonna make these little seagulls so we're gonna put some white on these just like that there we go and add our white See, I'm glad I taped that. All right. This is important to make sure it gets covered as much as you can as 100% because that's the only color I'm using, so. take I'm not going to take the stent the tape off the on the actual stencil part just these sides and then here we go see how it came out remember nice and slow oh look at that oh I messed up one of my yep darn it I don't know if I got enough I don't think I got enough medium in it but that's okay. Not the end of the world. It still looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could probably scrape it and do it over, but it, I think that would cause too much of a mess because of the white and everything. So we're just gonna leave it. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna take this tape off and then I'm gonna go wash my stencil because I don't want that medium to dry so this is really great so let me take you down for a closer look okay so I added some shadows on the leaves right but look at the cool the text is so cool when when you use the um, that gloss medium look at that it just looks so awesome and then I added the eye to the flamingo and the little black beak there added a little bit of wings right there I actually put some pink on the toenails, added some shadow there, added a little shadow on the sunglasses and the leaves, left my orange alone because I kind of liked it. Birds came out except for that one bird, got a little flumpy wing, but we'll see if we can't touch that up. We got our leaf over here, our palm frond, we got the ocean waves. And we got our seagrass. All in all, I mean, if you look at this from a whole, this painting is really, really cool. It's very summer. I mean, it would go great on a deck or like in a, in a sunroom, very beachy themed. Do you see this going someplace in your house even? You know, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> So, but yeah, I, I love it. What do you think? Do you think that you like the beach theme? I'm really liking it. I think it's a lot of fun. It's bright colors and it's got a great saying. So I'm really happy with it. So if this kind of content is something that you enjoy, please be sure to comment, like, share, all that stuff. And make sure that you make sure you subscribe um, to the channel so that um, anytime I add new content, you will be notified as soon as it comes online. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you really enjoyed this. And if you have any questions about how I did what I did today, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comments and I will be sure to reply to them. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.